morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. I'm very blessed and honored to be given the opportunity to uh, share my story. Um, my name is Matt Syracuse. I'm the founder of a company called WeWool. It's a one-for-one uh, -one brand, kind of like Tom's Shoes. Uh, we sell socks. So every time somebody buys a pair of our socks, we donate a pair. So I'm going to talk about uh, how a lot of people know me as the serial dreamer. Um, I'm always thinking beyond where I am now. I, I love where I am now, but I'm always thinking how to make it better. Um, and these past couple of years, my focus has been on other people. So I'm even more passionate about it because I take myself out of the equation and as I fine tune and sharpen uh, all my ideas, I realize a lot of people can be helped because of that. So I came up with a couple steps of a serial dreamer, okay? Um, one is experience life. The second is to recognize a problem. So while you're experiencing life, you might come across a person or a situation uh, that needs some fixing. You dream up a solution. You fight the fear of failure. So the everyday things in life that you go through, the struggles, um, just fighting through that, you know, figuring out who the people are around you uh, that you're so afraid to disappoint and realizing that the real people that are going to support you are going to be there no matter what. And once you remove that fear from you, uh, you can do amazing things. You put your, dream into put your dream into action and then you fine tune the plan and then last is repeat. So the first, <laughs> the first story I'm going to talk about um, is a ministry that I started in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, that serves breakfast to the homeless uh, every Saturday morning. Um, so, we'll start with step one, experience life. I found myself sitting in a church on Main Street in uh, downtown Hartford, and I was at a funeral service for the homeless that uh, happens once a year. I'm looking around, I'm like, how the heck did I end up here? You know, I don't even remember who invited me or how I, how I was there, but I was experiencing life experiencing something that, I mean, there was probably only 20 people in that room that weren't uh, part of the homeless population. So a very small amount of people were experiencing what I experienced. And basically once a year, they honor all those that were lost um, that didn't get a formal funeral. And afterwards, I saw this man. Um, he was wearing camouflage. He was all grizzly looking, you know, scary, scary looking guy that most people wouldn't necessarily go up and talk to and I just I heard this voice in my head you know go go talk to this guy and ask him ask him where he lives so I asked him he lived down by the Colt building um, right along the river and I just all of a sudden I said I love to cook and I said hey would you like it if I came and, and cooked you breakfast and whoever whoever else lives lives around uh, where you're living he said yeah that would be great I said okay what time he said five in the morning Oh, oh my gosh. I was in college at the time. I was playing hockey. I was also in the army. So I was doing all these things at once and I was I was like, you know what? I wake up early, five days a week. I can certainly sacrifice a Saturday, one Saturday, right? But so I experience life, I recognize a problem. There's there's people that are hungry, right? They're not getting they're not getting food on a Saturday morning. Um, so I dreamt up the solution to go out, grab a Coleman camping grill and just start cracking eggs and making egg sandwiches. But then the fear, the fear creeped in, right? Uh, you know, what if I get attacked? Uh, what if I fail? What if nobody shows up? What if it's only one person? Uh, all these different things started going in my mind. Five months later, I decided, I'm gonna do this. I'm finally gonna do this. So I called a buddy on a Friday night Again, I'm a serial dreamer, not a serial planner. So I called him up on a Friday night and I said, hey, I'm gonna call up a couple more guys. Would you be willing to meet me uh, in the morning? We're just gonna set up on the sidewalk right in Main Street and we're gonna cook breakfast. He said, sure. So we bring this little tiny cooler, right? We have, we have maybe 50 eggs in there, uh, a jug of milk, orange juice, and one box of joe. We're like, perfect, we're gonna, we're gonna cook for a few people, it's gonna be great. 
So we fought the fear of failure, we put the dream in action, we set up there. Before we even lit the grill, there was a line of over 100 people on the sidewalk. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is, we are not prepared. We are not prepared for this. So that day, we probably spent close to $500. My one buddy kept getting in his car, running back and forth to the store, and we're, he kept getting box of Joes, which are very expensive. They only serve like 20 cups of coffee or something. So we had to fine tune the plan. We sent out a massive, massive cry for help. And here's our, our logo here. It's called Sparrow Ministries. It, it still goes on every Saturday for the past, uh, for the past four years. So we serve uh, upwards of 500 people on a Saturday. So do the math over the course of uh, four years, every single Saturday of faithful people showing up. Uh, it's a lot of mouths that have been served just from fighting that fear and going through. So we fine-tuned that plan, right? And we were like, well, we need more volunteers and we need more food. So Facebook can be a very positive and also a very negative tool. So we, we used it for its positive side. And we put out a cry for help. I put out a video saying, hey, this is what we did. This is what we need. Within seven days, the next Saturday, we had over 20 volunteers and we served close to 500 people. We had food left over, so we were able to bring uh, food to the pantry next door. So we went out there, we fought that fear of failure, and all these people were helped. We, we just thought it was going to be like two or three people, and they were just going to walk by and we were going to... We were going to cook upon order, you know, just, hey, want a sandwich? And we, <laughs> we can't stop cooking. And it's, it's really amazing um, what goes on today. And the topic of, of our discussion um, here, here this morning, and we we're all supposed to focus on synergy. Um, so here's a picture, actually, of my father and I on that first morning. Um, I was cooking... I was cooking on one side, I was cooking the meat, and he was cooking the eggs on the other side. Um, and it was, it was really, really a special moment. Um, but it was, it was stressful, and we realized, you know, we needed to, we needed to make this thing work better. Um, so let's talk about synergy. The cooperation of two or more organizations to produce a com combined effect that is better than what can be accomplished alone. So I realized, you know, me and my two buddies and my father, we were just a tiny little organization, right, on that first day. And we needed so much more than that. So since then, Sparrow has partnered with uh, an organization called Urban Alliance, churches from all over the state. All these other nonprofits just show up and we're able to feed people. We're able to help people with resumes. We're able to purchase people um, suits just to go on an interview. A lot of people, that's, that's the only thing holding them back. So where I thought all I was going to do was serve people sandwiches, Again, that repeat, that last step, we kept repeating it, doing this over and over, and it, it just keeps expanding into more and more. Um, like I said, I since uh, handed it over to uh, two ladies that were with me from the very beginning, and they're doing a wonderful job. So that leads me into my business uh, that I started and run today. And uh, here's some more pictures of Sparrow. There's all the people. Those are just all volunteers. Um, so we went from four people to, to over 20, uh, and everybody was happy. Uh, it's, it, it's really a special, special place. As you can see, we're outside here, okay? We, we were on the news a bunch of times. Again, we're just asking for help, and people, people answered. All right, I think we got a little video here. So our next problem was people are cold, right? We hit the winter, people are cold. You can see this lady, she's literally, she's crying. She's just telling me how cold she is. And that didn't sit well with me. So again, we fine-tuned the plan in the ministry, and we said, we gotta talk to the church that we're outside of and see if we can bring this inside. They have a state-of-the-art kitchen. Let's see what we can do here. So I think we can go to the next one here. So we put signs up all over, we got approved, and we were able to come inside. And now we run it inside every single Saturday morning. So people are able to, for a couple hours, take off all their layers, let things dry off, and, and we're able to sit down and really have a discussion and just eat breakfast with someone who maybe hasn't talked to anybody in a couple weeks. Um, so I'm gonna talk about WeWool for a moment here. 
and how that developed from my process of being that serial dreamer. So on one of those snowy mornings where the governor shut down the highway, um, we still showed up on a Saturday, and a friend of mine once told me how they kept socks and underwear in a bag in their car, and they would just, anytime somebody needed them, they'd, they'd hand it out. I said, wow, that's really cool. And to this point, I never, I never ran into the opportunity, but I had the bag, and I was coming home it was an absolute blizzard, and there's certain people that can't make it into the warming centers or shelters, there's just not enough room. And I started to drive around in all these streets, and I would just roll down my window and I'd say, hey bro, you want a pair of socks? Give the first, the very first guy I give a pair of socks to, started bawling his eyes out. I'm a young 20 year old college kid that has a sock full of drawers. I could literally wear the same pair of, or, a new pair of socks for a month without doing my laundry and I'd still have a fresh pair in the morning. This guy started crying and I was like, okay, again, I'm experiencing life, right? We talked about going to a homeless bureau. We talked about, we were not allowed to be on the roads. And I'm not saying break laws and this and that. I'm just saying experience life. Break away from your Facebook feed, right? And all these articles that you have to determine whether they're true or not. Go out there, put your feet on the ground, talk to people, experience something so then you can say, no, this is my story. This isn't something I read about. This is something that I, I know needs to be done, right? So I started going to Walmart and spending all my money. I'm going broke. Like I mentioned before, I was in college and I said, this is, this is not this is not going to work. I need to figure out a problem. So we experienced life, right? I gave a man a pair of socks. He cried. It, it absolutely shook me to the core, right? Recognize the problem. People need socks. I since found out that they're the least donated item because they have to be brand new. So you can't take your used socks and put them in those bins that you see in the grocery store parking lot. They have to be brand new, so it's difficult. So I dreamt up the solution well, people are buying socks. Why not buy them from a company that's going to go out there and, and turn that purchase into a donation? Fight the fear of failure. Again, this is probably the hardest thing to possibly do. So my wife and I, we got married. Um, and I, I'm all Italian, so you basically have this bag that people just give you money to at an Italian wedding, right? So we were like, we're, we're both very modest people, and we had a pretty sizable chunk of money all of a sudden the next day and we didn't know what to do with it so I started dreaming up this business and I you know met with investors here met with investors there and one guy said yep it was on a Friday he said call me Sunday I'll have the check ready for you on Monday I said great I called him on Sunday he said never mind so part of me was like that's it it's, my dream is dead that's if this guy who's so successful doesn't want to be a part of it, then it must not be right. And I said, you know what? We have, we have the money ourselves. I don't need to take out a loan. I don't need to have an investor. We have the money we need. So I bought 7,000 plus pairs of socks, never sold a pair of socks in my life, know nothing about the industry, and it was terrifying. In that very instant, within a couple days, my wife had a miscarriage. And we, all we wanted to do was be parents, right? And that just destroyed us. I wanted to curl up in a ball. I just purchased 7,000 pairs of socks, right, that are being made. And now my wife and I, our life is over, right? We're just like so devastated. Well, we got out of it. Our love, our love carried us out of it. And I made it through that hurdle, okay? Now I get my email. The socks are ready. They're on their way. Oh, great. My father calls me, my best friend passed away. I called this kid every day on the way home from work. Every single day. Just a devastating loss. And now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have pallets full of socks coming to my home office. What, what am I going to do? I'm going to call the guy, he's going to sell them back to him for, for less than what I bought him for? That's it, I'm giving up. No, I fought, I fought through that fear because other people were relying on it. What I want you all to hopefully walk away from today is you may have a dream, but it might not be you who's gonna benefit from that dream. 
there might be someone out there that really needs you to fight through those moments because they they need your dream is for them. Your dream is to is to help other people. If if you have a dream for a business, it could be your future employees that are dying for a job to work for you. So I just encourage you to fight through those those life moments that feel like are just going to drag you down. Um, because from experience, it's been it's been amazing to to say you know what I can go through anything and and, and make this happen. And if it if it failed, I knew there was people around me that were going to support me. So. I talked about all these points, uh, the synergy part of our business, right? So now we have our customers, they're our main group, they're our heroes of our business. Where do we donate the socks to? So we partnered with World Vision, who's one of the biggest nonprofits in the entire planet, and they have a footprint in hundreds of countries, and now we're able to tell our customers, all of our donations go to them, and they, they uh, they put them out to the communities in the U.S. and all over the world. So if you're thinking, uh, you're dreaming about something and you're thinking it's not possible, in my case I was right, it wasn't possible, but I left out a certain word. It's not possible, it wasn't possible to do alone, right? But it was possible to do with my friends that were amazing photographers and took pictures of my products for free, my other friend that took videos of me, right? World Vision uh, teaming up with us and being able to say, no, we're really doing this, right? So it wasn't, it wasn't possible for me to do on my own, but it was, it was possible to do, and again, our, our topic is synergy here, and it was, it was so amazing for me to think, my whole life story up to this point relies on synergy, right? I, I grew up playing sports, and if you had a bad game, there was a, there was a team to pick you up, Right? All you have to do is come back, I played hockey, come back out the next shift and do better that time. Right? It's no different in business, it's no different in a marriage, it's no different in a friendship. Right? You, need to, you need to work together to do really big and amazing things, and even the small things too. So just the next time you think, I can't do this, maybe you want to tack on that, that other word and say, I can't do this alone. Right? Because I, I bet you there's a lot of dreams that die every single day because people stop without adding that word. So I want to thank you all today for, for listening to my story. And, um, I know we have a lot of amazing people that are going to follow me here. And again, just thank you so much for allowing me to do this.